Man, peace, love, light, and healing to my brothers and my sisters in the faith. One foot in, one foot out, carnal, double-minded. And we are all in this walk of faith together. And I always say that because I know that there's a lot of us that are carnal-minded or double-minded. Our father don't like that, so we got to figure that out. But, you know, I come in spirit and truth as always. I just want to spread some love. Talk to my brothers and sisters real quick, man. This is a conversation of fellowship. You know, this is what we need. We got to sharpen iron. You know, that way we are prepared for what's to come day in and day out. Thinking the Father one day at a time. Taking no thought for tomorrow. For today has its own troubles. Which it does every single day, y'all. I mean that, you know. I love y'all. So, you know. Um, man. I just want to ask my brothers this is a question real quick, you know. I just want to talk to y'all real quick and ask y'all a real serious question. Those who have ears to hear, let them hear. And this is pertaining to who it's pertaining to. You know, I realize that, you know, we live in the last days and perilous times. We live in times of stiff neck, heady, high-minded people. You know, we all say we love Jesus Christ. Everybody want to claim the Lord this and the Lord that. But, you know, are we really challenging ourselves day in and day out with his words? Are we sitting there focusing on our ambitions and our aspirations and our manifestations and our... And then all of this kind of mess that this world is speaking on. Well, I want to ask my brothers and sisters a question because it's a big situation going on. And I realize, as I know that we are in the last days, um, that it's very important that we question ourselves and understand whether or not are we lovers of this world. So that's my question. Are you a lover of this world? Are you a lover of this world? That's the question. I want to ask my brothers and sisters today. Because it's very important that we understand the heart of our Father and what He desires of us as children of the Most High God. Are we lovers of this world? Because tribulation is on the way. The bold judgments are on the way. Um, the second exodus is on the way. You know, a lot of people don't believe these things. And it's sad because our pastors in the church are not talking about these things. Or a lot of these things are not relevant, but... We have so many distractions in the world right now that's keeping us away from the word of God. It's keeping us, you know, fighting, fighting against the, a war against the spirit to focus on the father and do what he say do. That's the problem. So, but I ask my brother, this is the question, are you a lover of this world? And the reason why I say that, because if you are a lover of this world, whether you believe it or not, if you don't trust in the father with all thine heart and lean out to thine own understanding, you're going to take that mark of the beast. You're going to take that mark of the beast. Believe that. You're going to follow right along and fall right into a ditch in Satan's plan. Because of your heart is tied to these things in the world. Right? What does our father say in the, in the book of 1 John, y'all? If you read it, the father says in the book of 1 John, he says, To love not the world, neither the things in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the father is not in him. Right? For all that is in the world is the lust of the eyes, the lust of the flesh, and the pride of life, which is of this world and not of the Most High God you are. And he said that the world passeth away, right? And the lust thereof. But he that doeth the will of the Most High God would abide forever, y'all. <laughs> he already making it clear that his word is going to live forever. And those that live for him will also live forever, that keep his commandments, and love him with all their heart, mind, body, soul, and strength. Right? But hey, we still got pastors out here, and people out here still chasing after this world. Right? That's falling. The world falling right in front of our eyes, y'all. All these distractions, P. Diddy, R. Kelly over the years, all of these things going on. Prophecy is taking place right in front of us right now, and a lot of us are not here. We just think it's propaganda and just news on the TV. Well, it's not. It's a lot of it's distractions, but a lot of it is very important for us to pay attention to and realize what the heck is going on around us. Because it's very important that we know what times we're living in and what's going on. But I surely ask my brothers and sisters to think about this, y'all. Because if you're studying to show yourself approved as a workman, that needed not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of our Father and Spirit and truth, then you know that there are some lies out here and some things is wrong. And we have to detach ourselves from this world. You know what the father says in the, he was, uh, Paul wrote, y'all, if y'all was reading, if y'all reading the scriptures, y'all know that Paul himself was a man walking in darkness. Well, I want to say in misinforming of doctrine, he was walking, thinking that he was righteous and doing the things right of the father. Well, he wrote to his son, Timothy, right? 
And he wrote to his son Timothy to prepare himself as he girded himself up in spirit and truth to go spread the gospel and spread the truth. But he said to them to tell them in his writings, he said to tell them to perverse, perverse disputings of men of corrupt minds that are the stoop of the truth, supposing that gain is godliness from such withdraw thyself. Right. But godliness with contentment is great gain for we brought nothing into this world. And it's for certain that we can have it's for certain that we can carry nothing out. But with having food and raiment. Meaning clothing and things that we truly need, be there with content, right? For they, for whosoever, right? For they that will be rich, he said. What did he say what they do? He said they fall. He said they pierce themselves through. He said they, with many hurtful, with foolish, hurt, foolish, hurtful lust, which drown men in destruction and perdition, right? For the love of money is the root of all evil, y'all. For the love of money is the root of all evil, right? Right? For many have coveted after and erred away from the faith, which means they turned their back on the Father because of money. Because remember, you just said we can't serve two masters. You can't serve two masters. You can't love the Father and love money and serve the world at the same time. So that's a question we have to ask ourselves in this walk that we're walking on. You know, as we walk in this fight, keep fighting. As we fight in this spiritual warfare day in and day out, preparing for what's to come, we got to ask ourselves a question. Are we <laughs> lovers of this world or lovers of the Most High God? For the love of money is the root of all evil. For many have erred from the faith and pierced themselves through a many hurtful lust. Literally, drown themselves in destruction and perdition, y'all. And you can't say it ain't true. Look at P. Diddy. Look at our Kelly. Look at all of our brothers that were still slaves that sold their soul to the devil, worshiping Baal, worshiping a beast. You know? Throwing up these signs and symbols, which I want to share that video. As soon as I get a chance, I'm going to share that video with y'all on Instagram and Facebook. But y'all ought to go follow my brother Truth and Editor that's exposing the darkness and things that, that are subliminal to our understanding of discernment because we don't know. You know? We think we're smart. But we don't know nothing. The father says the wisdom of man is foolishness to him. Why? Because we think we know everything and we don't know a damn thing. That's why it's important that we give our life and submit our hearts and minds to the father so that we transform and we are able to walk in discernment and we know what's going on. What's going on, cuz? I love you. When I started this video yesterday, my wife called me. I couldn't finish it cuz I think you joined in with me and chat and kicked it in last early this morning. But all praise to the Most High Yahweh, Elohim, through His only begotten Son, Yahusha. Hallelujah. Right? But I'm letting my brothers and sisters know the Father says to love not the world. And the way I realize this, we as children of the Most High God, listen, no matter where you are in your life and what you got going on, I'm telling you right now, y'all, if we learn to walk in the ways of our Father that He's, give, that he's given us, we'll be made free. I've been judged a lot over the years, y'all. You want to know why? Because I can care less about getting rich and getting money anymore because I see it fall. It's not that I don't want to take care of my wife and kids and it's not important. But I also realize that men are lovers of themselves and the world love is on. But I'm not here. to. I realize who I am now and I know that I don't have anything to prove to any damn body. I don't have to show anybody anything but my father. The father is going to judge everyone and everybody and everything that we do, whether they're righteous deeds or unrighteous deeds. Right. So it doesn't matter. So at the end of the day, it's time to prepare for what's right, you know. And I'm just being honest with y'all, man. There's so much darkness going on. I love you, too, cuz for real. And um, I just want my brother and sister to know the truth. For the truth makes us free, right? The truth make us free. You know, I love the Father, you know. I realize I may not have everything in my life. And you know, the thing about it is, when you stop coveting and you do what the Father say do, you're not comparing your life to what everybody else doing and just be grateful for what he has done for you. It's, it changed the ball game. Because we, he told us not to do those things anyway. So when we listen to our Father and obey what he's saying do, we have no time to be jealous. You got no time to be hating on your homeboy or be sizing yourself up in your career and your life for what everybody else doing, you know? And I'm going to ask you this. I, I want to ask a lot of my brothers this a question, you know, because we are, we are, we are, we are indoctrinated. We are cursed people. 
We are the children of Yasharel. We the children of Israel. We are those children in the Bible that we've been deceived to not to believe is us. Telling us the Old Testament is done away with, excuse me, that these things don't apply to us. But they do apply to us. Why? Because we are the ones that cursed, the, that, 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 that killed Yahushua. Our brother, our forefathers were the ones that did these wicked deeds, right? And guess what he said? When, when, Moses, when, he, when Moses led the children of the Most High God out of, out of Egypt, he told them what to do. That's why it's important to go read the book of Deuteronomy so we know exactly what's going on. I'm telling y'all, my brothers is better book. We better get on board, y'all. We need each other out here. And real love comes from the Father and doing what he say do. He said, if you love me, keep my commandments. That's what he said do. People don't want to hear about that. You know, we don't want to keep the Sabbath. We ain't reading the Bible to make sure we're keeping the holy days. But we remember Christmas. We know about our birthdays. We know about everything else. These are the things that are important to him. And honestly, it's going to save our soul. But why bring this up to my brothers and sisters in the faith? Because... And we got to ask yourself a question. Are you attached to the things in this world? Because if you are, you're going to be in trouble when tribulation comes. Are you going to go rob and kill somebody for some food? Or are you going to be prepared to start getting water in your house? So that's another thing I want to ask my, tell my brothers to do. Right now, if you ain't been thinking about it, I don't care how good things may seem. Make sure you got some water stashed, some non-perishable goods put away, save some food. You know, it ain't about having your bank account full of money. How about having the things and necessities you need when things go wrong? Hey, Chelsea, what's going on, boy? I love you. I miss you. You got to come by over here and see the dogs. Yeah. See your boys, Avery. You know, we around the corner, if you're still around there. But yeah, praise is all praise to the most high, the most high God you are. You know, but I'm just letting y'all know, like, you know, we are in this walk of faith together, y'all. And we ought to help each other out by shopping and iron, spreading the word of the Father every single day and making sure that we walk in the spirit and truth out here. And we got to turn away from the from evil and depart from wicked things, you know. Trust in the Father with all thy heart, he says, and lean not to thy own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him and he will direct our paths, right? He tells us to be not wise in our own eyes, but fear you or fear the Father. And depart from evil, for it shall be help to our navel and marrow to our bones. That's our health, y'all. Literally. Seeking the Father and doing what he say do. You know, I realize we can sit back and complain so much about everything in our life. And not sit back and look at the fact that we have everything that we need. If our kids got food at the table they can eat, they blessed. If we can get up in the morning out that bed, we blessed. You know? And it's like, man, we've been bamboozled. By the traditions of this world and the things we see on TV and everybody else doing the thing that we're supposed to be living our life a certain way. Says who? Says who? And half of them ain't even happy and they don't even have peace. That's the sad thing about it. They walking in darkness. They got money in the bank account, but they ain't happy. I love my wife. Man, my wife got peace over here. You know, we ain't got to show the world we doing anything. We got nothing to prove to anybody. Our goal right now is to save our children. Make sure they serve the father and train the child up the way he said they should go. I'm trying to be a good father. I want to die, and I want to die when my son saying my daddy taught me something. Rather than my daddy giving me everything in this world, he taught me how to live for the father. He taught me how to love a woman. He taught me how to walk in righteousness. When I'm looking at men holding hands with men, women out here with women, the schools are full of wickedness, teaching the kids certain things they don't even know how to discern they left and right from. Yeah, you damn right. I'm about to be I'm on top of it. I don't care what nobody's talking about. I don't care what nobody's talking about. You know, I don't feel less of myself right now that I don't have a certain career or certain things. My wife loved me because I'm a man that loved God and she loved the father herself. And she knows that that's our way to inherit the kingdom and our, and our household has peace. We ain't walking around here fighting each other every day. She ain't sizing me up about washing the dishes. I'm washing dishes right now. You know, I ain't worried about my wife not washing no dishes. I live here too. So she supposed to wash dishes on her own? We take care of what we do for each other around here. We are a unit. You know, this relationship and marriage thing is not about having a good time. It's about the principles and understanding of the father, which is really important to our brothers and sisters to understand in these last days. If you're going to date someone, you better make sure they understand the most high God. It come down to reality of what the real world is about because we live in a reality out here. It's real out here. Ain't a joke. When I tell my brothers and sisters, make sure you don't love this world, y'all. I'm telling you. I'm tired of seeing my brothers and sisters falling down depressed, 
You know, we all caught up on this money and money and money and then get the money and don't do what the father say do with it. Everybody want to get the make sure my bank time, pursue my career. Is it is it purposeful for him? That's the question you want to ask yourself. Like, father, I want to pursue this career. How does this benefit you and my walking faith with you? And I say this to the children of the most high God, because it's not applying to everybody because everybody on walking ain't walking the narrow path. Everybody not seeking the kingdom, y'all, and I understand that. So when I'm speaking, I'm not speaking abroad and this is something apply to everybody. I know who I'm talking to. And I'm talking to those that will live their life every day to wake up in the morning and they thank the Father for giving them another day. When we don't watch our family members die like flies, it's a reason for so many things going on around us that we sometimes don't have questions and answers for. But when you seek the Father and His kingdom and His righteousness, you have an understanding of everything, y'all. That's the reason why I'm the way that I am. I don't fall short, fell short to the glory of the Most High God so much. You know, over them past years of my life, I tell them, I was talking to my wife last night, y'all. I'm like, babe, man, I came a long way. I've been reborn again. I ain't judging nobody, but I make righteous judgments. I love, I love genuinely in my heart. I'm willing to give everything I have to my brothers and sisters that need, you know, whether I have it or don't have it. Because I know who gave it to me. My time, everything, you know what I'm saying? I love, man. I'm like, I'm just at the point right now, y'all. I'm tired of wickedness. I'm going to be honest with you. That's my problem. My problem is my father's problem. You know, the love of the father, the fear of the father is to hate. The love of him is to hate evil pride and arrogancy. I hate evil pride and arrogancy. I'm tired of arrogant people. I'm tired of this world with this foolishness. I ain't going to lie to y'all. I'm tired of it. Y'all, you want to ask me in my opinion about it? I'm spreading my love for the father right now. What's going on, son? What you need? Okay, I'm coming right now with something to eat, all right? Okay, can I have PBJ? Sure, I'll make you a PBJ. Okay. All right. But yeah, truthfully, y'all, I'm sick of it. I ain't gonna lie. I'm tired of it. But see, it's so much going on, y'all. It's like, man, I know I ain't the only... I can't be the only one seeing this, man. I can't be. Yeah, we ain't God. We can't change the world. But what we can do is protect our peace. And we can save those that are with us or around us and let them know what time it is. By sharing our love in the spirit and truth and giving our resource to one another. Like, seriously. That's what I'm on. You know, I don't have no problem with nobody. I just just know I ain't with that food because I'm sick of it. I ain't even gonna lie. I don't watch my mother and father pass away. I, I learned a lot from my so many things from them and watching other things transpire in my life that I had no understanding of. But I do now. I dare ain't gonna show do now. And I ain't gonna walk around blind like an ignorant child that can't see. For real, for real. And I'm just keeping it honest with y'all. We got to make sure we don't love this world. Because we're going to perish with it if we do. Y'all think about the book, the book of where Sodom and Gomorrah what took place. How Lot's wife turned to a pillar of salt. You want to know why? Because she turned her back and looked back at the world and the things that were falling. Her heart was still stuck in her possessions and the things of the world. And she lost her life when she had it. You know what Yahushua said? For whosoever shall save his life. In this world shall lose it. But who shall, for whoever shall lose his life for me shall what? Have life. Right? People be like, what do you mean by that? How many, what is it profit of a man to gain the whole world and lose his soul, y'all? Think about this, y'all. I just want to share this with y'all, like, for real, on a real conversation. We're talking about P. Diddy. We're talking about all these people that we have been indoctrinated and falsified and looking up to as our saviors and people that's doing something positive. But they serve Satan. They worship the beast. Don't, ain't, there's no, there's not one prophet in the Bible in the scripture, y'all. If y'all really think about it, children of the Most High God, there's not one person in the Bible that represented our Father in, in spirit and truth and stood for him that lived, that didn't die and get killed. All the prophets in the scriptures die, y'all, for doing righteousness. You know, being the spies, they were taken out. That's why they're not here right now. You know, but I'm sitting there, everybody, listen to it. Everybody got to say this worshiping the beast and serving the world, giving their soul away. Like, man, I ain't selling my soul to this world. I'm grateful to be here. You ask me, y'all, I'm just grateful to be alive. Because I could have been dead a long time ago if you really want to know the truth. I don't even sometimes be like, Father, you spared me because I was I, I was on a limb. I was then going to show on a limb. Because I wasn't listening. Blind, walking in darkness. Body full of darkness. Mind full of darkness. Entertaining certain things. Not realizing these things were indoctrinating me, y'all. That's why I don't watch TV no more. 
If it ain't righteous, I don't want nothing to do with it. I ain't watching nothing that's going to pierce my heart and shine as the will of the Father and the spirit of righteousness that's in me. Period. And I'm challenging my brothers to do the same thing. When I'm around people, I say, I say not to be judgmental and say anything because I'm not trying to come off as this and that. But I'm at the point right now, I don't care no more. At that point, if you cancel me out because I'm telling you what you're watching is foolish, then you go ahead and cancel me out then. <laughs> it ain't hurting me. Honestly, it's helping me. It's helping me get away from you. <laughs> Straight up. All I praise to the Father, y'all, for sure. We're in the last days, y'all. For real, no matter how good and beautiful things may seem, no matter how things may come off and portray to be, y'all, we got to keep our mind and eyes open. The signs of the time are in front of our faces, and we got to know what's going on, y'all, all day of the week. So get girded in this truth, pick your Bible up, study to read, pick your Bible up and read. You know, everybody like, man, I got to get to the church. I got to get to the church. I got to get to the church. Well, I'm advising my brothers and sisters, while you rush to the church, have that same ambition and motive to pick that Bible up that's sitting right there in your possession. It's on your phone. We got the Bible app, y'all, on our phones. You want to read, sit back, binge, watch, and read. You know, and I honestly been trying to share it with my brothers and sisters in the faith, like our brother, a brother by the name of Brother Ryan on Truth and Editing on YouTube. He has a YouTube channel, y'all. And I'm not going to lie to y'all. I know it ain't for everybody. But the reason why I have been spreading truth and edited so much because I realized that we go to church, we are preached to, a lot of us are preached to, but we but we don't, it's not a lot of study time to gain understanding. It's a lot of jumping around, a lot of philosophies, a lot of talking, a lot of everything. So I know our brother Ron, my brother, a good brother of mine that I love and grown over the years. My wife introduced me to him a long time ago and, and uh, it's all study, it's straight scripture. It ain't men, it ain't words of men and words of men's and wisdom of men. It's straight from the Bible, what the Bible actually say. So you can make your own judgment and discernment so you can question the Father and say, Hey, Father, I don't understand what's in this scripture. You know, it, it challenges you to seek him and his kingdom. That's the reason why it's important that we study for ourselves, which our Father says every man has to work out his own salvation, which we do. We do. And we got to make sure we're not lovers of this darn gone world, y'all. I'm telling you. I don't love nothing in this world but my family. And the things the Father told me to love, he said don't love nothing else in it. So I love his words. His words has made me free as a man. He the reason why I'm able to, able to take care of my children right now. My brother asked me a question, and I remember telling him, I said, bro, if I, didn't, if I wasn't reborn again a man of God, I'd have been had a divorce. You want to know why? Not because I would necessarily cheated on my wife, but because I would have been outside, still running the streets and the clubs, hanging with my boys and trying to hang out with the homies that ain't got the, the, the head ain't on straight. It's just trying to have a good time and run away from life. You can't run away from life, I realize. And I spent a lot of years running away from life, partying, worried about getting fresh, going out to hit the hot spots and being in the scene and being out and about. It didn't do nothing for me. I spent all my money. I lost a lot of time. I made a lot of foolish mistakes. Went to jail left and right. DUIs, two DUIs, all of that. That happened to me. I had two DUIs, y'all. I ain't ashamed to tell it. I'm a free man. I ain't got no DUIs no more because I ain't a drunkard. Letting myself fall short to my lust, listening to this stupid music, watching my little brothers and sisters out here in the world promoting this wicked music that adults dancing to. You think my kids listen to that, man? They don't know nothing about no dang on rap music. They don't know nothing about none of these movies. They don't know nothing about none of that foolish crap. You want to know why? We're going to ask ourselves why we can't change. We keep entertaining ourselves with foolishness, man. I ain't trying to do that no more. That's why, that's why I'm at. You got to protect your peace and your spirit and your mind and your heart. That's the goal. We got to protect ourselves. We got to protect ourselves, y'all. So I'm just letting it be known, like, you know, we really are in these days. It ain't about pleasing ourselves. We get so caught up on pleasing ourselves, even with our own self. Like, how can I make myself feel good today? How about we make somebody else day feel good? That's why I do these lives. I know I'm not the only one feeling what I'm feeling. I don't feel prideful and think that I am. That's why I'm like, man, Father, I ain't nobody without you. I was a dead man walking, a dead man living before I picked that Bible up out of ignorance. Because I was walking around stupid. Because I had a good job and things were going good. I got money in my pocket. I thought I was the man. Didn't even realize I was a foolish walking flesh. Walking in darkness. And didn't have it all together at all. But now, I can have a wife and kids. My wife loved me. She cooked for me. She loved on me. She told me I love you. I'm grateful to have you as a husband. Like that, 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 that just made me feel so good. It made me want to be a better man every single day for the father and take care of my kids, y'all. 
Just being honest, y'all. I ain't, I ain't trying to flex about and brag on nothing. It all came from just obeying, obeying his word. That's it. That's it. That's all I do. You know? I love my brothers, my a lot of people I've been cool with. I be wanting to kick it with them, but I know that this righteous conversation ain't entertaining to them. You know, but I have to let it go. Like I can't, I can't, I can't. I can't uh, hide who I am and try to cater to you because then I'm turning my back on the most high God, which I cannot do. That's who's taking care of me. That's who I put my trust in. So how am I going to cater to you when I'm trying to cater to the five? I want to worship him wholeheartedly. So I got to give him my time. But I love y'all, you know, and I want to tell my brothers and sisters, be prepared for a tribulation. Y'all tribulation is really coming. Y'all I'm serious about this, y'all. It's all it's all through the word. And I ain't, I ain't trying to spill it all out what's in the word because I really want brothers to go read it. That's the reason why I kind of keep certain things. I don't want to come off as all knowing. I want I don't want I want the I want brothers to know. Like you want to pick this up and this is an urgency for you to go read it because it's coming out of a, a black man. Whatever they want to consider us. We ain't black people, first of all. But it's coming out of a child of God's mouth that's been living in this world long enough. I'm 35 years old. I'm praying to see many more years. Sometimes I don't even think I'm going to live to see that me that long with the way this world is going. Full of this wickedness is going on. I'm like, hey, how father, how long is this wicked? This wickedness supposed to really be lasting out here. That we everybody ignoring like it's normal. Same sex marriages, abortions, kids getting killed left and right. They done passed legal laws for weed all through our city. Everybody high. Everybody high. Off of blunt. <laughs> Funny, man. It's crazy. You know, we can't see nothing. In our neighborhoods, I ain't gonna lie. In our neighborhoods in Detroit, you know what tripped me out? It used to be nothing but liquor stores. Now it's nothing but dispensaries every day and gone where. Everything to, to keep us blinded to the truth, to doing what's right. Everything to keep us to keep us from doing what's right. Every day ain't gonna thing. Everything is we know it, y'all. So I don't watch none of this stuff. I can't even look at anything anymore without feeling some kind of way because I'm like, man, I know it ain't right. How did we say we have fellowship with the most high Lord and walk in darkness, y'all? We lie and do not the truth. Believe that. We cannot say we children of the Father and continue to walk in darkness. That's foolishness. That's foolishness, y'all. That's the truth. We cannot say we have fellowship with the Father and walk in darkness. And we're going to entertain things that's going to keep on putting us down. Then that's our sign right there that we need to let some things go. Stop being afraid of change. I ain't going to lie, that was my issue. I'm speaking for myself. You know what my issue was? I was to pray to God and talk to the Father and be like, Father, I wonder how I would be if I was just living perfectly for you. And here I am today, y'all. Here I am today. I used to say this back when I was 19. I was going to church. Mom and daddy raised me and my brothers in the Christian church. We grew up in Christianity in the, in the church singing. And I was a junior deacon. My brother was a deacon. My other brother was a deacon. Our daddy was a singer in the church, a full-time deacon. Our mother, mother was an usher in the church. We grew up in this in this atmosphere and fell away from it. Fell completely away from it. When I speak for myself, excuse me, I'm gonna put my brothers out there with me. I'm speaking on my own self right now. I fell away from it, excuse me. First of all, I fell away from it when my mom and dad died. And you know what happened to me, y'all? But I'm gonna give y'all my testimony real quick about this. Is that when I was in the church and I was going to church heavy before I stopped going to church back in the day. I realized when I was coming outside and trying to be around people and hang with them and kick it with them, right? Um, and he's talking about, I'm talking about just everything about being a church person I was getting despised about. When I was trying to date young ladies that would tell me I was too good or I was this and that and the third. I was nothing but a church boy. And I allowed myself to fall away from my righteous walk to seek the ways of this world. Which is the same way back to the beginning with the children of the Most High God when he told them, when I, when you go out there, do not seek the pagan ways and worship of these, folk, of these other gods that they worship. Continue to worship and follow me. So I look at myself in that same journey like, well, I did. Well, I turned my back away from the righteous walk trying to blend in because I want to fit in. I want to fit in with everybody and what everybody else was doing. That's what I wanted to do. I want the girls to like me, so I stopped carrying myself like a Christian young man. I started dressing different. I got tattoos on my arm that I wish I ain't had no more. I wish I could wipe them away. I don't even realize I be having them sometimes. I be looking at my arms like, damn, man, I got these tattoos trying to blend in, trying to be cool. And it was never me trying to date certain women and hang around certain cats and friends and everything else because I thought that that was the way because everybody everything about church was being despised to me you know man that's weak man that's boring and I allow myself and I, I, I ask I say to father I wish I could if I could go back in time and ever change any of those things I would 
I really would to be where I'm at today. In my understanding of my life, I'll go back and change every attribute and aspect of my life of walking in darkness blind. Which is why I did a video, y'all, and I was telling us to protect our children because I realized that we have been, it's from our forefathers, our parents, and the thing about it that bothered me the most is that we live in a generation and time is that the youth, we more, we blame and we, we, we need to get it together. The youth, they got it messed up. These youth, these, these young children, it's crazy today. But the elders ain't seeming to realize it came from them. Hell, half of our ways and ignorance and things we've been indoctrinated with came from y'all. Y'all was the ones playing these movies and listening to this music, using profanity, cursing around us, smoking around us, doing certain things around us. But it's our fault. No, they need to hear too. We, we, we hear. We need to be able to, we should be able to talk to y'all and share truth with y'all as well. It's because y'all been older than us or y'all been going to church longer than us or whatever. Doesn't mean that we don't, we, we can't fellowship and get understanding. You know what I'm saying? So overall, like I said, y'all, I'm, I'm, my focus with the children, I ain't gonna lie. I ain't letting my kids fall in this darkness, y'all. I ain't gonna, I'm protecting them with everything in me. Cause I ain't gonna lie, I pray for them, y'all, between me and you. When my wife told me she was pregnant with twins, you know what I said? I said, father, I want two boys. And everybody I told I was having boys, it was like, man, I laugh about it, right? Because it was like, oh, man, you're going to have a girl. And a lot of people that said that to me, I ain't going to lie. Some dudes I knew because they thought I was a player. They was like, man, you know this saying when you mess around with women and you out there and about that you, you know, you're going to be having girls and all this and that. And I was never like that anyway. That was a perception of me. But the reality is I asked God, I said, Father, if you bless me with two boys in this world, I'm going to give them back to you. And I made that promise to the Father. I said, Father, I'm going to give them to you. Because this world right now we growing up in, they're going to need these men. They're going to need our sons. If we got sons and daughters, they're going to need them. I'm telling you. I'm telling you right now. My wife work at the school, been working at the school board and the system at the school for over 10 years. The story she done came home and told me just be blowing me away. Like these, these parents, they condone these children with these wicked things. They don't even, they just... And it's like, I, I understand. I do. I'm not, I'm, I understand. I really do understand. You know, you know, it's, you know, it's, it's unfortunate that they had to grow up and, you know, the way that they did as parents and adults before raising their kids and then their kids got to reap these curses because of their upbringing. It's sad. And that's the reason why I spread these words, y'all. And I, my goal is like, man, I'm going to continue to do this. I'm going to continue to do this, y'all, all the way to the end. So, you know, if you love me like I love you, you know what time that I'm on. You want to call my phone, talk to me, fellowship with me, the door is open, inbox me, like, hey, bro, this is, I'll meet up. We can meet up and sit outside in the car. We can sit outside the park somewhere and just have a conversation and talk in love, man. We can shop and iron. Straight up. That's the time and I'm on. Because I ain't going to lie. I'm ready to go. I'm sick of this dang on world. I know that may sound like, man, how can you say you're sick of this dang on world? Because ain't nothing right in it. My father not happy with this world. So how am I walking around happy with this world? You know, this is just me speaking, y'all. I'm not saying this about anybody, yo. This is just my heart. This is where I'm at with it. This is why I am the way that I am. I'm tired of it. I've seen what it did to me. It damaged me for many years. I'm very honored and, 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 and grateful my father let me be a husband today. That I can be, be a husband. Through the women I dated, I knew I thought about them. My old sisters, I be thinking about them sometimes. Like, I wish I could just call them and talk to them and ask how they doing and say, you know what, sister, we were young. You know, I was just growing, we were growing up, we didn't know any better, and I'm praying and hoping that everything is good in their life. Asking the Father, I ask the Father to forgive me for everything I did wrong. Forgive me for my sins, Father, confess them wholeheartedly open. Father, forgive me for my wrongdoings, and I pray to never turn back to them and do them again. Ever again. Because if I go back, it's a wrap for me. Period. And I know that. I ain't, I ain't foolish. I'm done. I'm done. You know? I'm straight up done, y'all. And I'm just going to be honest with you. I'm just sharing my testimony with y'all shortly and just letting my spirit speak free, y'all, in love because it's real out here. Just lost a brother downtown in trouble. Just did a video live talking about that. It irritated me. Tired of seeing my brothers die and get killed off left and right. Because they still walking in darkness out here. Can't nobody see the truth. Everybody believers, but nobody want to seek the kingdom and, and look into the ways of righteousness so that they won't fall short to this damn wicked world. Brothers losing their life, dying, leaving their children behind. I ain't even into rap. What's the little uh, uh, rich homie Quan? I ain't even into none of that rap stuff no more. But it's to hear this man died and left four sons and four children behind. He died and left them behind because of wickedness, doing drugs and having affiliations with wicked, evil people. You see what I'm saying? That kind of stuff. We don't want to talk about that, though. 
People don't be wanting to talk about the truth. Like, man, don't, ain't you tired of it? Haven't we seen enough of our people die off? We are them cursed people, like I said, and I see it. It's all in the scripture, it's true. We the consumers, and we the face of wickedness. We the face of nothing but wickedness out here. We the ones, the LGBTQ, uh, the Black Lives Matter ran by two women. What? <laughs> what? This stuff is wicked. Everybody won't love. Jesus is love. Oh, God is all about love. It's about love. No, it ain't about love. Just love alone. How about we love in righteousness the way he said love and things will be better. But that ain't the way. That ain't the world. It ain't never going to be. It ain't never going to be a better place until it's all said and done. When he come back and he change and, and what he said he going to do, what he going to do, he's going to come back and he going to separate the wheat from the tares. He going to separate those that believe versus those that don't. That's what he going to do. He going to cast them into the outer darkness and cast them into a burning fire. That's what he going to do. And all the detestable things, the cars, the money, the clothes, and all the things that people worship over him is going to perish as well, y'all. I'm telling you, be ready. Whether we live to see it, which a lot of us are going to see it, we're going to see it. He said every eye going to see it. And everybody going to see him. So, I'm telling you, be ready. Be ready. Because I am. That's my heart every day. I'm focusing on it. While I'm sitting there pursuing my life and building for my kids and my wife right now, we're making transitions through prayer. Asking the Father to guide us in our decisions so that we can do what the Father said do. So that we know that we are covered by him and not by our own will and lust. That's the goal. That's the real goal. I don't care what nobody's talking about. And I'm not trying to compare what nobody else doing. Don't care. I really don't. Because I know what the Father told us to do. And I'm a child of God. He said unless you be converted into a child, you will not inherit the kingdom. We got to become kids again, which means we have a parent. Our Father is our parent. That's how we got to look at God. We got to look at the most high like a parent. What did my daddy told me not to do? My dad said, son, I don't want you to go over that young lady's house. Yo, that's the same thing the father's telling us. I don't want you to do that, son, so don't do it. Because if you do it, you're going to hurt yourself. Well, my son, go ahead and do it anyway, and he hurt himself. Now you see why he in pain. Simple as that. It's simple as that to me at this point, y'all. I ain't going to lie. It's simple as that. And I ain't trying to fall short no more. And I'm not trying to walk in my emotions and live in my flesh for nobody. Period. Ain't nobody in look. And the thing about it is, you know what's so funny, y'all, about all of this is that we put so much time into these things, right? For nobody truly not to care at the end of the day. <laughs> our father is our father ain't, ain't, ain't focusing on none of these things. He's focusing on us obeying him. And he wants us to do what's right so we can have eternal life, y'all, so we may live forever. That's the purpose of going a narrow way. Enter by the narrow way. Enter by the narrow gate, y'all. We going narrow. We going straight. Straight to the kingdom. That's where I'm going. And I want my brothers to come with me. That's what I want. I want to see y'all there. I want to praise the Father with y'all. I want to see my parents again. I want to live in peace. I want to live in harmony. I want to live in joy. I want to live like that. And I don't want to have to worship the beast no more in this wicked, fallen, traditional system that we live in. This curse them that we cursed under. I don't want to be in this no more. And I know that may sound a little bit overboard, y'all. But that's where I'm at with it. So... You know, I can't ask anybody else to understand me and say, well, bro, I agree with you. I'm not asking for agreeance. I'm just letting y'all know where I'm at, you know. And I don't mind sharing because I love the Father that much because I know he saved my life. He saved my life. That's for darn sure. And my brothers can vouch for that. They know. My wife know, too. Because she was right there with me when I was going through a lot of them trials before we got married early, earlier years. She knew what I was going through. I was coming home, snot-nosing, crying. Like a little baby, every other night, drunk, blacking out in the whip, car accident, all kind of stupidness. Father, save my life. And you know what? I laugh about it because I laugh about it now because I'm reborn again. I'm free. I'll be like, dang, I was stupid. <laughs> I was dumb. It wasn't like my parents didn't teach me, right? It was just, it was just, I let myself go so far off into the deep end of things that I ain't, I, I, how, I, how can you bounce back? When you open it, when you open your heart and mind to so much darkness and things, you don't even realize how far you have gone into it to the point you were really in, drowning in the ditch. Like we said, destruction and perdition, the father says. That's what you, that's what we walk in. That's where I was at. Like, man, hex, nah, bro. Never again. Never again. I ain't going back. You know, my little days of the my little days of depression right now, you know what I get mad about y'all, if I could be honest, is not doing enough for the Father. That's what bothers me. 
Like, Father, can I, how can I do more for you? That's what be on my mind. You know, while I'm posting scripture on Facebook and Instagram, while I'm trying to share the word of God and everything, Father, what else can I do more? He's like, son, you're doing what you need to do. You're doing enough. Just keep doing what you're doing. Stay consistent. And let the Spirit, let me guide you through the rest of the journey. That's what, I, that's what I've been humbling myself to do. So I can be used the right way. I ain't trying to prove nothing. I, I, I don't want nobody to die and go to hell. Because people don't think hell is real. I don't know what you thought. Everybody want to get R.I.P. when they die. Rest in peace. Rest in what peace? If they were living their life with a father and living right, what peace is that? You know, what kind of peace you think they resting in? I, I'm guessing that must be a, a philosophical or philosophy way of thinking. Because I don't know what, I don't know where that came. R.I.P. R.I.P. Rest in peace. Like, like, what? The only peace we, if I'm, we, if, we, if you want to say rest in peace, the only way that would be resting is in his peace. That's in the most high God peace. That's resting in his peace. <laughs> You ain't living your life with a father doing what's right. How you resting in peace? <laughs> Think about it. It may sound crazy. It may sound like I'm trying to, you know, but it's the truth. How you resting in peace and you weren't doing nothing right in your life. You've been a robber, stealing killer, a liar, an adulterer, a fornicator all your life. And you thinking that you, when you die, you resting in peace? Everybody, man, R.I.P., man. With, with to be absent from the bodies, to be present with the Lord, everybody want to say, right? I don't think that's true. They want to fact check that. That ain't true. That ain't true at all. You know, that's where that, that comes from the indoctrination of the church and us being listening to certain things so much without studying the source of approval for our own understanding. That's not true. So when my mama died, I said my brothers prayed over our mother's soul, regardless if we knew she was a saved person or not. We prayed, Father, please take our father. Please, Father, take her, take her with you. Please, Father, let her be going with you. People don't think about that when they live in their life and not knowing when they last they gonna be. Like, nah, uh-uh, not me. Nope, not me. Not me, brothers and sisters. I'm on, I ain't trying to, I ain't going out like that. Because my father told me I can live. He told me how I can live forever. Eat the right foods. Stop eating pork. Stop eating the things in the Bible he said not to eat. He tell us what to do to protect our bodies and our people curse. We don't want to listen to nothing the Father say do. We wonder why we got high blood pressure, diabetes, and ain't feeling too good. But we, ain't, we ain't doing what he say do. Simple as that. We ain't doing what he say do. I realize that. Me and my wife were sick for years. <laughs> we had to become damn near vegans, which we did. We, we eat meat. Still, I eat chicken. My wife don't even eat meat in the Harley no more. It's mostly vegetables in this house. But I eat turkey. It ain't nothing but vegetables and mushrooms, y'all. Just trying to take care of my body, y'all. Take care of my youth. He be like, dog, you 35? You like you 21? Look at me. I lost weight. I was big. My face was fat. I was overweight. I was feeling sick. I was, in the, I was working at my IT job. I remember calling my mom, y'all, back when I was eating heavy pork, right? I would call my mom. I'm at the job, at, I'm in a, at a Fortune 500 company, downtown Detroit, working a good job. I couldn't even type on my, I couldn't even type on my computer. I couldn't even move my fingers. I was shivering. I, I was going through all the kind of feelings in my body because of the bad eating. I was eating heavy bacon every day. I was feeling so sick, y'all. I called my mom and cried. Mom, I don't feel good. My hands, my hands shaking. I mean, I was just going through it, y'all. But ain't nobody know that, cause everybody was. The only, only thing people saw of me was a fresh dude. He looked crispy. He take care of himself. He looked good. That's the world today. Man look at the outer appearance, but the father looks at the heart. That's what the father care about our heart. While everybody else looking at you and looking at me and sizing us up off or they on the outer appearance of your house and what you doing. Our father ain't caring about none of that. He focusing on what we doing in our hearts because we know he knows that if we focusing on him, everything is going to be all right. And ever since then, y'all, I've been right. Eating different. Things been different. I don't even feel the same. I don't even look the same. My homeboy was like, dog, you don't even look the same. I'm like, I know I don't look the same. Ain't nothing the same about me. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things become new, baby. I'm new. I'm new. I ain't the old man no more. I'm new. Everything became new. My license became new, y'all. <laughs> My credit became new. My lifestyle became new. Everything changed. And then, you know, and I was like, man, I, I, I couldn't take no credit for none of that. All that came from doing one thing, and that's picking up that Bible, y'all. Reading the word of God and saying, Father, I don't want to be a hypocrite. I don't want to be a sinner no more. I don't want to walk in this darkness no more. That's exactly the decision I made. That's exactly the decision I made.
It was simple as that. I'm tired of living life. I'm tired of being depressed. I'm tired of arguing with my girlfriend before she became my wife. I'm tired of feeling depressed, drinking all night, going to clubs, hanging out with my homeboys. Ain't nobody sharing nothing to uplift you. We all doing the same damn thing together. So how are we helping each other out? How? We all sitting there drunk together in our misery. How are we helping each other out? It makes no sense, right? But I, I wasn't thinking straight to even realize that. Didn't even know that that was important. That I needed that. Like, man, brothers and sisters, I know I'm rambling right now. Because I've got the joy right now. I'm enjoy it right now with it. I enjoy talking about the Father. That's my conversation. My wife know I talk her ear off. My brothers know I call Michael. I call D. I call him all the time. All I do is talk about God and his world. How we prepare. Get prepared, y'all. We talk about the blessings and the glory and the love of the Father and grace that he has, has, he has for all of us. He's a patient guy. He's so patient with us. We won't even deserve it at all. He's so patient with us, man. It's ridiculous how patient our father is. I'll be like, sometimes, like, father, how are we still here? I watch people mock him every day on TV, mockery everywhere, left and right. Wickedness is all in our faces. Nobody, people ain't really asking and talking about this or his presidential election bull crap. He's trying to suck the people, black folks, mind into this wickedness agendas that they got going on. That's why I don't even vote. I ain't voting for nobody. I'm voting for the Most High God because I know what he said going to happen. He said that these things were going to come. I see what's going on. And who and who in the right mind thinks that a woman should be a darn gone president? <laughs> that, that right there is another conversation. I ain't going to even get that started. That might stir up an argument. But who thought that could be okay? In this feminist movement world we living in where women running every dang gone thing. And trust me, I know as a, as a young man that's been that's my skin color, as a, with technical skills but like myself, y'all, I'd have worked in every place and everywhere. Dang on there. And guess what's controlling and running now? Nothing but women. Man, ain't nowhere to be found hardly in the schools no more. You going my wife, I take my boys to the school, thank the father. We got a school up the street. Our school, our kids can go to the school up the street. It's nothing but women in there. Ain't no men in there at all. No men at all to talk to the kids, no men to teach the kids, no men, nowhere to be found. All women. Women with a women doing everything. Men, where where, where, where we at? That's why I want to raise my boys right. Where the man at? We too busy focusing on getting our bread up and entertaining this lustful women that's out here lost, lost themselves. They don't even want you. Because we ain't living and doing what the father say do as men. Men ought to be following the father doing what he say do. That's what I tell my brother. We talk about it all the time. This world is falling because men are not obeying the father. If, men walk, if we as men walked around doing what the father say do, if we were walking around and living our life doing what the father say do, this world would be totally different. But look who running it. Look who running it, y'all. And the father never created it to be that way. I don't care what nobody talking about. It's not downplaying a woman at all. But that's not the system and the, the governance the govern that the father created. That's not, what he, that's not what he created it to be. And the reason why he said these things were going to come in the scripture. He said that. Now we got men holding their hands on their waist now. Women wearing the pants. Men got their hands on their waist. And, and they're literally on their waist. Walking around. Looking all silly. Tight clothes. Looking like women. It's ridiculous out here, man. Ridiculous. We supposed to be voting for that? Voting for Donald Trump? This man only know he don't, he don't even serve God. And that's my thing to my brothers and sisters. How we voting for something that ain't standing for our father? Think about it. Only thing we can do is say, well, if this person doing that and that's right, and they're that and that right, well, maybe I can vote for them because of that cause. But I ain't voting for nobody that's got wicked agendas and part of anything they doing. Well, why am I voting? For, for what? For what? I know what my father says about to happen. He already showing me what's going on. So why am I voting for any of these people that ain't got no attention to do what the father say do? For what? Look what Obama did, y'all. We a boy. I remember back in the day when Obama came and we all calling this man a black man. Everybody, we got a black president. That man ain't nowhere near black. It's funny. <laughs> this man was never black. We, 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 just been, we just been bamboozled so much with everything all, all our life. Voting for, for Barack Obama, what did he do? Pass wickedness, gay agendas, gay marriage. He passed all of this wickedness in this world. He allowed all these things to happen. But everybody talking about some Barack Obama. But he, he allowed wickedness to come upon us. He opened up doors for wickedness, y'all. Wickedness literally in our faces. And he, and he supported it. I ain't supporting none of them. I ain't supporting none of them. Not one of them. And y'all ever ask yourself a question when y'all think about this? 
Where is all the people that's running for candidate and presidency along with them? They don't even exist. You don't even hear about them. All you see is Kamala Harris and Trump. Like nobody else exists. Where is everybody else? And you, if y'all you, ever noticed, there's never been a young person in leadership ever in this world. There's a reason for that. Everybody old is dirt. Everybody old. Donald Trump old. Kamala old. Wrinkled up face old. Everybody old. So there's no, not one youthful, wise young person that got knowledge and spirit and wisdom and truth that can, that can be a president? That's, why, that's another reason why I don't even vote. Ain't no, ain't no, it, ain't, it ain't no equal opportunity in that. That's all control. Everything control. All of it. Look, it's no, it's no, it's no, no righteousness in that. None. But hey, brothers and sisters, I know I've been talking to y'all, enjoying talking to y'all, washing the dishes up. And I love y'all, you know. I'm just praying that we continue to focus on the Father and His will. And um, be it not a lover of this world, I'm telling you. I don't care about, don't let, don't let the, 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 the cares of this world make you fall away from the walk in your faith, y'all. Don't feel like you don't have anything and don't let these things in this world take no thought for food or what you shall eat or what you shall drink as well. Yahushua said that many go by Jesus Christ. He said, take no thought for these things. So why are you worried about them? Especially in the end, think about it, you got it. And concern ourselves about everything that ain't important. Sitting there comparing ourselves where we at in life to who? To a fairy tale system that's full of lies and deception? In reality. Most people will tell you that. that ain't reality. I ain't trying to prove nothing, man. Prove everything to the Father. Give him my heart, mind, soul, and strength. Love him with everything, y'all. And that's what it's going to be. But thanks for y'all tuning in, chicken, you know, kicking it with me and fellowshipping with me in this truth, y'all. That's, you know, it was on my heart to just, you know, to speak about that and talk about a lot of things. Just share some things with y'all in love and spirit and truth. And uh, y'all have a blessed week, y'all. I love y'all. Shalom.